This is Robert from Twin Peaks, and you're listening to Inspirado Projecto. Got a light? It is raining cats and dogs out here. Los Angeles, California, eh? Past couple of days, I can tell the antenna tree really appreciates this. And in fact, as soon as I said that, can you hear this? Can you hear the leaves moving? Hi, antenna tree. Hi. Hi. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Got the antenna tree right here. It's loving, loving the rain. Loving the rain. Loving the rain, right? Oh, my gosh. You're getting some wonderful, wonderful feeding time, aren't you? We're going to listen to this episode. This uh, centers around Monster Palooza when I went out there with Ryan McGonagall, Dave Uchansky, and Tara Reed, a.k.a. Tara of Terra. if you want to check her out on uh, TikTok. Monster Palooza. We had a wonderful time. These are some of the folks that you're going to hear interviews with. First of all, we start off the episode with Reverend Mark and Tara of Terra right out there on the balcony before we set sail. Um, we also talked to uh, Phil. What is his name? He makes posters. I don't think I got his last name. Phil uh, and a guy named Lance who makes masks. He's from the Best Little Horror House. We then talked to a very surprise guest, uh, one which doesn't exist, actually. He, he made his, he, he, ex- he existed himself, let's put it that way. Vandalmort the Wizard, he is Maleficent's son. Then we're going to talk to Patrick, Patrick Kendall from Mordacious Art Studio. He paints bottle caps. We're going to talk to his uh, buddy Matt Fuller who makes some very interesting curiosities as well. Then we're going to talk to Kelly Mann, uh, who is keeping the estate alive for Vern Langdon. Vern Langdon contributed a lot to the famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. I don't know if you've read that magazine before, but Monster Palooza, I've come to learn, was sponsored by uh, Monsters of Filmland magazine. Monsters of Filmland magazine also have a... Uh, film festival each year and I was fortunate enough to have uh, the retro sci-fi film I'm in Max Neptune and Menacing Squid we played there and also uh, when they moved it to Roswell they had one in Roswell and the movie was played out there Uh, so yes we talked to Patrick Kendall Uh, we talked to Matt Fuller and also Steve who I come to learn is a fellow Chicagoan and from Columbia College. How cool is that? Um, so he is with ST, let's see, his website is stexe.net. We've got, we've got, we've got all of the, um, these people that we talk to, we've got their websites and everything, Instagrams in the, in the description and the picture here is of the tiki zombie who is sculpted by kelly mann and Vern langdon these are characters that appeared in monsters of filmland magazine and uh Vern langdon is also a musician kitty kitty i'm older he's a musician he's long he's he's passed but um his friends and family are keeping up the estate and I also give you a little bit of news about the Dos Lagos Film Festival, which actually already happened. So this um, episode, I started the recording October 14th, 2022. So I'm going through all of this information that I created last year. I'm getting it out there into the world. Um, the last, second to last episode I did was just n- newer stuff. The last episode I did was uh, in an interview with Eric King, Desert Fox from Cannabis Conundrum Podcast, and Foxy Lady from Awesome Sauce Radio. So that is the uh, the last episode I did. So check it out. I'm very excited about sharing this episode with you. So if you want to check out any of what these folks are doing, 
Um, the hi- the hyperlinks should work. They will definitely work if you go to an- if you're listening to this on Anchor.fm slash Inspirato Projecto. The 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 um, the links will work in there. Some of these other podcast sites, they might it might work on there as well. Um. Oh yeah, we also talked to. Um, Justin Ishmael, he makes some really cool figures. He makes the showbiz pizza guy, Billy Bob. And, uh, yeah, so hope you enjoyed this, this program. And if you are involved with Famous Monsters of Filmland, I would love it if you posted this on your website. Uh, if you're a fan of the magazine, please share this. If you are featured in this interview, please share it on your Instagram TikTok, what have you, Facebook, wherever you go. Thank you so much, and uh, check out this episode of Inspirato Projecto. Too much random bullshit happening all at once at the exact same time. Wow, I love hearing that. And then before that, it was interesting because I would hear the guys from Mysterious Universe talk about it. Um, Oh, what's strange about it, but they, 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 they didn't really have, I mean, they're much different now as far as like the sort of show they are, they are, they have a very, they're, they have their, their, their foundation of what they believe the phenomenon to be, uh, is interesting, uh, especially when it comes down to, uh, synchronicities and whatnot. Yeah, man. And I, so they started considering synchronous, they, they talk about synchronicities with respect and, uh, consideration and treating it like it's an entity that's it's working with us a certain right? sort of reverence yeah absolutely I've actually noticed that like within like really crazy high kind of psychedelic experiences that I've been very very fortunate to have positive experiences but, um, <laughs> it's been the thing that has been able to sort of lead me out of anything uh, uncomfortable or, or put me into a spot yeah. where I was just like on a roller coaster ride and I was loving the entire moment of it, it was, the synchronistic aspect, like that bird that actually is <laughs> right, right now. That was a hummingbird. That's a hummingbird. Campus. I'm very, very, hummingbirds are very, very special to me because of one of, uh, of a, of uh, one of my teachers. One of my teachers was a Hayoka, a trickster. And one of the things she told me was that in her, um, in her vision quest, she told, like, I, I wanted, she had a vision quest and it was crazy because she, she went out in the woods for like, four days and didn't drink or eat any food and she was naked crazy you know and, and she was like I loved it every it sounds moment. fun actually you should do it Dayuka Di- I've been naked as a teenager Hey-oka. in the woods in a clubhouse before Hey-oka. which was cool but like not since then H-E-I hey and then Yoka hey. I go to a nude beach and people are like don't go there <laughs> don't go there <laughs> and I'm like why don't They're go like, there you don't want to go there. There's you know creepers and shit. I would I'm love like, okay. to go to a new beach, but dressed as like the creature from the black. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Can we both like dress up like creatures, but one of us has the film camera? Oh no, you can't film there. It's illegal. Fuck. You have to go to. How beach. would you document you that? Oh, shit. you could. You, you could to... use uh, just shoot through the eyes, like one of those kinds, right? Oh, so sunglasses. Knows. Sunglasses. Google. Google. Google glass you don't, you don't or something a, like. You don't go to an American. <laughs> you don't go to an American one. You go to like one of the one of the ones in Europe and stuff to where oh, cameras well, are on that, the you know, that's there. a lot more money though to perform <laughs> but it's, it's it'd true. be cool but it's true but it would be you would get the I found out I'm mostly British so that would be neat but you know I you, thought it was you, you, get German, extra, but I guess not. you do get something extra a lot of times not being American and fucking, fucking with people versus being American and fucking it's kind of funny if you're an American but supposedly fucking with people I have white America, privilege no one gives a shit but well it's because you know it's no. because your eyes are blue <laughs> I got really scared when those people were like abducting blue hair, blonde eye, like girls back in like when we were in middle school or something. Yeah, really? High school. Phoenix, Arizona. Or? Excuse me. Yeah. We all got freaked out. Kendra's blue hair and blonde or blonde hair and blue eyes. And I was like, eh. <coughs> Nobody got abducted. So then all these kids just started dyeing their hair blue. <laughs> like, shit. Suddenly all these blue hair kids are on yeah, the rise. Yeah. Yeah, both Everyone's you, hair is black now. Yeah, you guys are both the secondary character and, and taken. I'm sorry. So. You know, soon after that, I actually did dye my hair black. To disguise yourself? I had anything to do with it. I started putting in fake eyeballs. Well, I wasn't blonde. I was always brunette. Except for when I was born, I was a redhead. What? <laughs> Wig. I started putting in fake eyeballs. 
big eyeballs. I just pop my eyes. You ever seen the movie V? You ever seen V? It's my life story, all right? Oh, what? V, what is it? Oh, I met my wife. V for Vendetta? <laughs> no, no. Is it the alien V movie? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's this scene that well, I will always remember. There was a guy. He was a camera guy. Oh, no. Remember that TV show? Oh, my God. He was a camera guy, and he was you trying to get to the truth. And he's like, what's going on? You know, suddenly these extraterrestrials have landed on here and they said they come in peace what's going on and so he was like he really wanted to get to the truth and he was hiding he got up through an air vent kind of like i think die hard might have been out around that time because i saw a lot of people no 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 it was, it was he's crap. like crawling through this like and he's looking through this thing and he sees this lady with um she puts her she's looking at the mirror and she, it's the lady that, that is like you know the commander or whatever you know that's out there telling people what to do and she goes she takes out her eyeballs and there are these lizard eyes and, it, and then the camera goes dum 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 right on these like lizard she have, eyes like, so she had like prosthetic lizard eyes that she put prosthetic regular eyes over or like well she was a lizard so what happened was there are these scenes where like someone <laughs> she's having a fight with someone and they scratch her face and then you can see the lizard underneath <laughs> her face she's a reptile oh, okay yeah. you're a reptilian so that's what that's okay, basically yeah. that's me so that's my life story yeah so as soon as I started putting in <laughs> human eyeballs I'm like, all right, now I can blend in. But aside from that. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Something I picked up from the earthlings all the way. You got to do what you got to do. I like one of my favorite <laughs> phrases. It's one of my favorite phrases. I use it, you know. Ignorance is bliss is another good one I've heard him say. <laughs> See? Confirmation says yes. Slap <laughs> oh her the confirmation. Trash, yeah. Well, because this was something that you were saying earlier is that you're talking about the hummingbird and how that's that's like a symbol. That's yeah, important. Yeah, that guy's pissed off for some reason. The kashala. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm. We were talking earlier about synchronicities, and what's so crazy is that as I'm talking to people on the phone, as I'm experiencing synchronicity with them, suddenly something like that will happen, or like that'll happen, or you just heard right now a horn honked. Like, I'll pay attention so much to those, or right then the hummingbird goes, you know, or something happens. So I've been noticing a lot of that stuff happening in these moments where these revelations strike when I'm talking to people on the phone about synchronicities, and it just goes, and all of a sudden it's there, and you're going, of course you're saying that right now. See, there's the hummingbird we're oh talking God, about. Oh, my God, buddy, are you okay? <laughs> it happens, like, is just as a sort of reminder. He He's fucking. And He's what's so great is that the hummingbird. I wonder if it looks like something he could eat. The hummingbird yeah. flies. Oh, there's a like nest infinity. right there. Dude. Oh, really? Is that a nest? I don't know if that's a nest or what? Right up there? Oh, maybe it is. Is that? Maybe. Wow, I, mean, I can't I tell from the top. before. Oh, shit. I can't Whoa. tell from the Or maybe it's uh, maybe daddy maybe flying back and forth. Like that spout. I don't know about there's that. There's a spout up there. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. That doesn't look normal because none of the other spouts look like that. Something. And oh, that's wait, where the hummingbird came from twice. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Pick. Interesting. Whatever. So I think maybe he's bitching at us and he's going out to get food or supplies or something for the babies and moms. Interesting. Now I know where to look when I see the hummingbirds fly away. Yeah, see if, yeah, see if that's a nest. Oh, um, I forgot. Are we supposed to be quiet? What? No. <laughs> okay. No! <laughs> <laughs> None do. <coughs> oh my god. <clears throat> so I've been noticing that a lot lately. Mm -hmm. And the horn honking. Oh yeah. Right as you're saying it. Right as you're saying it. Right as you're saying it. Yeah, so we were we were deposited a way over there. Uh, on the uh, <laughs> on the street far from from where that. And what was interesting about make a song out of it. was Terry, you see that? Color? Yes. You see that? You see that? You see that colorful building over there? That, that I'm gonna get my ukulele. I'm gonna get my ukulele. You can make a song with the next Oh god! Oh my god! You could play somewhere over the way rainbow by that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by that guy. <laughs> like that you know one guy. guy. You know the one. The somewhere over the rainbow yeah. one. Yeah. You know that guy. You know what I really want to do is do a, cr a cross between you know somewhere over the rainbow and rainbow connection. Do you know? Do you know? Rainbow connection. Yeah, by That's Kermit right. T. Frog. Do you know which? Oh my God. Do you know which? Uh, do you know which flower? You, I fucking love the Muppets. Do you know which flower you grab that flower? Reverend. It was oh, partial. No, no. Shit. It was partial Reverend, but it was partial. It wasn't big green, was it? Was it? Was it big green? No. I no. I passed up that bag because there was very little in there. 
and it was to the right of that one. Like, if you're looking at the bakshi, there's like ribbon sitting here, big green, and then like there's something over here. And it'll look like bigger nugs. Yeah, no, 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 looser nugs. No, uh, 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 leafy. Okay. Uh, uh, um, I mean, it's buds, but it's like, we called it like scroungy, scrabby bitch or something. Scroungy. Like hey, scroungy, bitch. where's scroungy? <laughs> Hey, Scroungy's up at the liquor store. It looked like... Look down, Scroungy. <laughs> scroungy. <laughs> the Reverend Tree is in there? Yeah, yeah, Damn. half of it is. Half Damn. of it. Yeah, that's there. what I gave to Richard. I bet Richard was just like, what the fuck? He's I'm surprised. Probably, I wonder he's if he's in a coma. God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's so crazy. I've been smoking that all day. Every day, almost. Like, just doing projects. Oh my God, those projects are so fun, Kurt. That's amazing. Your ukulele skills. What what pro- what projects? <laughs> the uh, for, for for film my, film my, and and Das Lagos. So my my view is she's oh, not thank s- you. She's not smoking to the point that we're at now. <laughs> oh Mark, can I show you a short film? One joint throughout. And playing. Right. Because latex and plaster all shrinks. You so you have to build it bigger than it really is. Um, will it just continuously shrink? Uh, no, it'll stop. Once all like the water kind of dries out, you know, it'll stop. What's the? What are the? So you're using clay. Is it only clay, or are you using some kind of like? Well, this uh, is latex. Oh, that's latex. Oh, that's yeah. latex. Yeah, you do the sculpture out of clay, and then you make a plaster mold on that, and then you pour the latex in there. It's fascinating. I've always wanted to make my own masks, and to see this, it's just like blowing, blowing my mind right now. Just wondering the layers and the textures. Like as I'm looking at each one, I'm just kind of like dissecting it through yeah. my own brain as to like from the bottom up and what that must take to do that. Like just that tongue alone yeah. <laughs> on the flesh right there. It's fun, yeah. These are great. What's your name? Phil. Phil. I'm Kurt. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, you too, man. This stuff is great, man. Thank it's you. Really cool. Do you, have a, do you have a business card? Uh, it's the big one it's right there. Oh, cool. Thank you. Wow. I just saw some really cool... Uh, so many great things here at Monster Palooza. I'm out here with uh, Ryan and um, Tara and Dave. I was checking out. Now I'm looking at some extraordinary jewelry. I just talked to a guy who makes these really kick-ass... Um, Sculptures of things, all kinds of cool stuff. There's a wide uh, variety of all kinds of folks here. All kinds of great costumes. All kinds of great costumes. It's incredible. Makeup designery. Ooh, they're turning someone into some kind of creature over here to the right. Incredible. I'm looking at something called the human tree root. Tree robot. Human tree robot. Whoa. Paintings, prints, and sculptures by Mark S. Brunner. Hey, can I interview you for my podcast? Oh, sorry. Not, not comfy doing that at this moment. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Your art's cool, though. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Wow, there are these really cool posters over here of, like, um, what remind me of, like, the old, like, um, Sideshow posters. We haven't done this style yet. Let's do this style. And then we'll these are great posters, man. Are these black lights? Yeah. Black light posters. What's your name? Lance. Can I can I interview you? But for my podcast, your name's Lance. Lance. Yeah. Did you design the shirt you're wearing too? No, I bought it here. Just really, it's, it's really cool. Oh, I thought it was cool. So um, I noticed that these are like, I almost get like a like a sideshow kind of uh, vibe. Right, yeah, like at the circus, true. like because yeah. you look at some of these, it just looks really magical. Yeah, no, that was one of the reasons we use black light a lot is because no, a lot, of, a lot of people don't use it. So, 
makes for a cool looking poster. Yeah, like that Akira one is really, really cool. I can only imagine what that looks like under a black light. Do you have a black light? I know, I know it's be competing with this, right? But um, I can only imagine what that, what these look like. It, it, does it take a lot of forethought to try to figure out? Like, do you paint these while you have a black light on, for no, instance? No, it's it, the printing inks. You can you can have black lights on, but it's usually you got to line it up in advance, uh-huh. you know, because some of them you got to try to match, especially the comic ones. You got to match the, the, the look of the comics. Uh-huh, so, uh-huh. Yeah. It's cool, man. Thank you. Um, what would you say are some of your favorite comic books? Uh, I like horror comics mostly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Check out the uh, famous Monsters of Filmland booth over there. Yeah, I actually know the guy that's running it now. It was cool, huh? Yeah, he's pretty All awesome. Corey Ackerman, you know. Oh yeah, no, that was awesome. So cool, man. The vampire in the coffin. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, I was talking to him all I glanced over. I'm like, oh, I didn't see that there. The lady in the coffin. <laughs> it was so cool. So how long have you been ma- you know, sculpting these? And uh, my friend Max, who's he's walking around. He does the sculpting, and uh, I make the posters. And uh, we've been doing it for 10, 12 years. Is this a Guar action figure? Yes. It's great, man. No way. It is a real fucking figure, too. That is crazy. Wow. I'm really, I really want to get in into this. I, I, I just finally bought this, like, hand casting yeah. thing. And I figured, okay, that's a good place to start. But what would you say are better elements to you? I mean, this is just plaster. But what, what would you say are better elements to use? you got to talk to Max. Oh, he's, yeah. that's right. He's yeah. the sculptor. He'll be back. Now, with these black light posters, have you ever, um, like, I remember some of the black light posters, they have, like, what, what was it they were using? Velvet or something? Fuzz? Yeah, you fuzz, can, yeah. yeah, you can do fuzz. I just call them fuzz or flocked. Yeah. Yeah, you can, I've done them. It's, uh, it's just another process along with it. It makes the blacks really black. Do so every time. If you do them, they're really bright. Wow, man. So cool. Well, uh, thanks for letting me talk to you. And what's your name again? Lance. Lance, pleasure yeah. to meet you. I also want the dance We have a uh, scream person here. They've got a cart of various babies and uh, <laughs> and dolls and taking photos of it. It's like a cross between uh, Scream and Hellraiser. Oh, that's pretty clever. Scream and Hell's, Hellraiser. Wow. Very cool. So many intriguing people here. Extraordinary costumes. Extraordinary costumes. It's actually, yeah, very, very intriguing. Wow. Very cool masks being created over here. Little kids with crazy masks on. I mean, it's... Um, wow. I think I'm going to call up the gang to see where they're at. I will be right back. Oh, yes. All right. So tell me, sir, uh, who are you? You're, you said you're a, you're a made-up Disney character. I am Vandalore, son of Maleficent. Maleficent, give me this... My mother's Maleficent gave me the scepter so I could take over the world. Ooh. Ooh. What's, what's the scepter? What, what is it made of? Is there a special crystal? It's made out of gold and it does magic. Disappear things and causes the sky of my power and gives power to thorns of the forest. Oh, interesting. Okay, I notice you have an interesting ring on your finger. What is that? What kind of jewel is that? It's a ruby. Okay, you got a ruby there. And this is gold, partly. I paint to oh. the, the silver gold because I love silver. Incredible. Actually, no, I'm a gold person. So tell me more about, about, about yourself. Well, I, I love Monster Palooza. Yes. And I love villains. And I love the Goosebumps, uh, Haunted Mask, uh, the Ventriloquist Stummy Slappy. And um, I also... Uh, like uh, the Twilight Zone, yeah. The Twilight Zone, uh, the Mass, the Dummy, uh, Little Girl Lost, and uh, Nightmare Twenty Thousand Feet, and the Masks. 
What, what, are, some, what are some of your favorite uh, superpowers that you, that you can do with your staff? Turn someone into... If, turn someone into a map. Turn someone into... To, to make the creatures that people are mocking and wear on Halloween to make it, them look like real monsters. Ooh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. What, and what's your name again? Voldemort? Vandalore. Vandalore. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank pleasure you. meeting you, sir. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Wow, this place is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Do you, have, do you have any small uh, Halloween t-shirts? I have that one. I have all of them in small. <laughs> oh, cool. And this. Okay, okay. It's super popular. And we also have, uh, that's, a, that's a women's shirt. And we've got this. And the way the million of these. That's the iconic. That's all okay, okay. Let me think here. Let me think here. Right. See, and you say you have that as small? Yeah. I think. Huh? I think. I think I'll get that yeah, one. Yeah, you want the small? Yeah. You can live small. <laughs> now, do you, do you take Apple Pay by any chance? You do. Awesome. So he is oh, here. Oh, uh, Bo's here? Yeah. So uh, what's your name? My name is Patrick. Oh, I'm Kurt. Nice to meet you. Kurt? Kurt. All right. Yes. What's your, uh, are you uh, Oh, you it's called Inspirato Projecto. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very here, cool. I'll, uh, right on. And, uh, and it goes out all, all, all over the place. Nice. So you started painting on bottle caps? Yeah. Um, it's probably been about 20 years ago. I don't know if you've heard of, uh, they, they, there was a company that started doing art-o-matic machines, and they were old cigarette I machines. I did hear about that. Yes, yes, yes. And so at the time, when they started doing them, I was like, well, I, I need to come up with an idea that would fit in a cigarette pack. Yeah. And I thought, hey, maybe if I paint on the inside of bottle caps, that might be cool. And the oh early ones God. were really primitive, really not very good, a little embarrassing, but I would mount them on a cardboard-shaped coffin. Not, not dissimilar to these little uh, wooden pieces here. Right, right. My, Matt, my buddy Matt does those, but I would do oh, them on cool. the coffin. And I thought, you know, that's not very practical. I need to come up with something a little better. So I started doing them on necklaces. They sold pretty well as necklaces. And then I decided even better, let's put them in a little shadow box with a background. So cool, man. I normally do a lot more, but I'm down to just a couple this, this show. But I have sold probably about 500 of them over the course of starting them, and uh, oh my God. they've been very popular little guys. So, yeah, wow, man. just a weird idea that has kind of uh, caught on. Well, it's interesting so. how that stuff, you know, and plus it's the cheapest canvas in the world, you yeah, know. Absolutely, it's, right? It's a, a bit of a, a pain because you have to find <laughs> bottle caps that don't have that little gasket oh, inside. right, right. Otherwise, right. you have to put them in the oven and try to peel it out, and it's not fun. Oh. But I, I found them online, so, yeah. Wow, man. Now, do you use a magnifying glass? How do you do that? No. Um, I'm probably at the point now. I'm 55, and I'm, my vision's getting a little worse. Mm -hmm. But I can still do them. I just do them freehand with a very small brush. That's acrylic paint inside of the, uh, the bottle cap. Wow, so, man. So find a reference photo. I put it in Photoshop in a circle, and then I just go to town painting it. That them, is so. incredible. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate How it. How long yeah. do you think you, it usually takes you to paint one of these uh, on uh, average? They can take upwards to an hour, an hour and a half, depending, you know, if they're really detailed. So, yeah. Do you just sometimes do, just do it right off the cuff, or do you kind of plot it out first before you do Yeah, it? I always like to have a good reference photo to work from before mm -hmm. I paint them, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then, so then you guys join forces. You find out that he liked drawing on bottle, uh, on uh, guitar picks? That's me also. Oh, that's you also. Guitar picks are me also, yeah. Dude, so you did the guitar so this picks, This artwork starts life at about a, this size right here. There's David, for example. <laughs> so there's your guitar pick. Take it's That is the original artwork right that there. That's great. Uh, I just completed a license deal with uh, the Cheney family to do uh, Lon Cheney Sr. No guitar way. picks. They were supposed to be premiering at this show, but they didn't show up in time. Yeah. So look for them online. How cool, they will man. Be coming out. I mean, these are the kind of guitar picks that, like, any of those, you know, any heavy metal band would just totally oh, absolutely, go for. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, they've been very popular. The guitar picks have really caught on. 
Uh, Greg Nicotero, Walking Dead fame, loves my guitar picks. He's a guitar player. He cool. comes by every time I'm here and oh wants God. to get the new ones. So, I love it. Yeah, Greg is a great guy. He he promoted them the very first year that I created them in the frame sets, and I sold a ton. Oh, my so God. thank you, Greg Nicotero. <laughs> I love it. That is so cool, man. Yeah. See, stuff like this happens. You just start following your, your intuition, your passion, and you're just going, hey, Absolutely. I'm doing this because I'm getting a kick out of myself. This is fun, fun little thing. Then someone goes, hey, I like that. And you go, okay, I'll give it to him for a birthday yeah. next time. You know, and it just keeps growing like that. Absolutely. Matt and I have talked about it before. We come to this show not with the intention of making a ton of money. We come here hoping that it will finance our trip because we are monster kids. We love to be here. We spend a ton of our profit on other stuff because this is this is our environment. So, and yeah. So what, what, what do you what do you like to what what, what aspect of, of this is uh, are you do you work on? Uh, Custom made coffin magnetics. That's awesome. Right there, and That's then cool. I do the. Um, and paint these Ooh. in their stash boxes. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then the screen print all Patrick's designs for him. Oh, you, do, you do all the screen printing, printing on my shirts yeah. and hoodies. And he's got a line of original shirts coming out soon, too. Yeah. So. What, are, what are the uh, shirts that you're going to be coming out with? Uh, they're actually old, like, 40s and 50s style vintage Halloween, because that's my favorite. That's great. So. That's great. It's cool when you could just combine your talents in this fashion, right? Absolutely. I mean, who would have thought that you know you find yourself uh, painting Matt on I, guitar? Matt and I and actually that. met because of that magazine right there. Famous he monsters. My, he came to one of my shows, Dude. and uh, we started talking about famous monsters of Filmland. And he and I started. I had been collecting for a while, so had he, and we started collaborating. We would buy lots of famous monsters together. I finally completed my entire run of Famous no Monsters. Way. It took me forever. And yeah, Matt's I'm still working on it, but close. he's very close. How many How many uh, issues are there? At this point, there is 300. I don't remember where they ended. With Probably. Corey Kim and, um, see, Corey Kim, all the runs, it's, a, it's almost 300 total. Yeah. So, so you had to go on a quest to try to find all these oh online yeah. somewhere, all the nooks and crannies. Yeah, it's not an easy thing to complete that collection. I'm down so. to 11 issues, so that's all I need. That's awesome. And one of them sitting like five booths over. Wow. You guys, it was a pleasure meeting you. And yeah, uh, thanks for the Oh yeah, and if I could have a card too, because yeah, then I can sticker card. I'll it's make sure that I. Card, yeah. so. I'll um, you know, I'll do. You I'll have a card also. A, no, I don't have a card. I, I should make a card for you. Fine. But uh, it, it'll be out uh, like on... Uh, oh, I'm Kurt. I'm Matt. Nice to meet you, Matt. I'm from... The, so the name of the uh, podcast, it's called Inspirato Projecto. And it's, uh, you know, basically whatever inspires me, I project out there. Ideally, oh, cool. it, it inspires someone else. Cool. And always, uh, and it's all about just getting people's inspired, you know, what, what inspires them, the seeds that where they begin, and then what it grows into. And I like to show that, the that process. The best in the world are old monsters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. You know, it's so funny. Oh, my God, that's so funny because um, my friend was telling me about, like, uh, like oh, yeah, uh, talk about some nudist colony. And I said, you know what would be so funny? I want to dress up as the creature of Black Lagoon and go on to a nudist colony and see what happens, nice. you know? Because yeah. how funny would that be? And all of a sudden, I you lift it. up your shirt. There he is. It. Very cool. Are you on Instagram? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I am. I'm on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get some more of your coffins out here. Oh, yeah, oh, get those yeah, coffins. I am uh, working on that, actually. I had paper stick to two of them, so um, I'm yeah. them back here. Will you have me the bag of keychains also? Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, man. Nice meeting you guys. Nice to meet you, too. Take have care. a great night, my friend. Thanks yeah, for yeah. Those guys were great. Wow. I love finding the people who are excited about talking about what, what they do, you know? I love it. And some of these places, it's like, did I walk down this aisle? Did I not walk down this aisle? Did I see this? Did I not see this? Oh, there's the Donnie Darko rabbit. Popeye's Seaport Village. 
Wow, what these guys have made, these little tiny miniatures. There's, uh, what's his name? He's eating his hamburgers. Little Popeye. Wow. This is great, man. The little, the little Popeye village over there. Incredible. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this whole diorama here is phenomenal. All kinds of these really cool dioramas from these various um, Jason movies. Just so cool the way that they've set them all up. Nightmare Before Christmas, Trick or Treat movie, Scream. Oh my god, these look crazy. These things look like they're made out of wax, these little, these little creatures. These little creatures. Cryptids, no way. This, this person makes little tiny cryptids. Oh my god, no way. It's Got a vending machine here too. Wow. Tardigrade. Oh my god, no way. Tardigrade. So crazy. Just check it out. I wonder if any Monkey's paw. It's it you created all these? The sense of humor here is great, man. The monkey's paw back scratcher. I was I was in the monkey's paw when I, I Back in Columbia College in Chicago, I was in the monkey's paw. So to see the monkey's paw back scratcher here is just <laughs> phenomenal. I'm a and the graduate of Columbia College, is really good. Chicago? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, my art program. You're a graduate of Columbia College, Chicago? Yeah, I actually joined in the uh, film program for the animation department. Oh my God, it's incredible! Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Kurt. Hi, I'm Stephen. Holy cow, Stephen! This is great, this? man. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, I come across guys who's from Columbia College. I graduated in uh, a long time ago. Do you mind if I interview you for my podcast? Sure. Because you got so much interesting stuff here. Okay. Wow, this is great. He's going to catch some of these references that I'm going to that I'm going to um, tell him. He's going to catch some. He's going to catch some of these references. He's got all kinds of these little creatures out here. There you go. Thank you, man. I love your stuff every year, man. Thanks. So as I was looking at your, um, like the cake topper, drive-in date, as I was looking at these, I was reminded, of, m reminded. do you remember the Gr uh, Brookfield Zoo um, wax sculptures you could buy, of, like the gorilla or the... The Ramas, yeah. Yeah. The uh, Moldorama company is actually based out of Brookfield, Illinois. Yes. And Brookfield Zoo has the most Moldorama machines of anywhere in the world. Man, and, it, uh, it's amazing that you know that. It's well, incredible you know that. It's uh, I've always wanted to own one of those machines. Me too. I was just telling my, I was just talking to my mom and my brother and Josh and my brother and sister going, I want to get a Moldorama in the house one day, you know? I've looked into it and it turns out that you could actually customize a sculpture with one of those machines. You can send them a sculpture and they will Produce, really? They'll produce the die cast uh, blow molds in no order for it to work. Yeah. So it's kind of like a 3D printer, but they're they're just doing the wax of it. Well, right? Is that kind of yeah. thing? Like as long as you send them the 3D like um, you know blueprint or whatever, or whatever, whatever. Yeah, or want. yeah, sculpture. Yeah, or it's and it would have to it have to work with that kind of machine like a blow mold, you know. And I was just talking about this with my my family the other day. Then I come up here and I see these. And it totally reminds me of that. It totally yeah. reminds me of that. Were you at all inspired by that when you were creating these? Uh, no. I was more inspired by the Marx figures of like the 60s and the 70s. Oh. Um, which were always in this same scale. They always had the base. Oh, cool. And I actually used some old 1960s cowboys and Indians figures That's as cool. my uh, anatomy and scale references for these, wow, man, this whole series. That's fantastic. Holy cow. So you, you said you went to Columbia College for film, right? I started in the animation program. Oh, the animation program. Yeah, I was there for two, three semesters or four, and then I decided I just couldn't draw well enough to be in the industry, and so I switched over to fine art, and well, now, I stuck with that. 
So. Well, it's crazy because look at how you drew all these. Yep, I am, I found my way out here, and I worked in showbiz for a little while, learned some t uh, learned some skills, uh, and I do everything on my own. I do my own mold making, casting, and everything out of my house. Oh, these are seven dollars each and three for twenty. Yeah. Is all the same ones that are in the bag? Yeah, but they're different colors. Gotcha. But uh, I think they're all here on the bag. So three for twenty. Yep. I like this ectoparasites. I mean, just the names of these are phenomenal, man. It makes it fun to look at. It makes it fun to look, look at the little faces on these guys. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, sculpting things of actual size. And uh, yeah, sometimes the mold making is a real challenge because these aren't injection molded with pressure. These are all just kind of you... gravity, gravity fed from molds with cold resin. So lots of vents, you know, lots of uh, core sprues. Really, a lot of mold design has to go into these things. Wow, man! And so, do you have you like? Are you doing these one at a time? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can pour. I can pour several of them at a time. I have a. This plastic has a work time of about two minutes, so I can pour a few of them at a time. But I generally have only one mold for each of these guys. So after two minutes, you gotta hurry and get it out of there. Yeah. Wow, man! What movie is that from? These are from the movie Star Crash. That's what. I'm Okay. It's cool. <laughs> I plan to do a whole series of them. These are 10 each? $10 each, yeah. I like how colorful they are, too, you know? <laughs> so you're combining all these skills together, basically, you know? I mean, in a sense, this is frozen animation. I can totally imagine these things animated, these little creatures. Sure. I mean, it's kind of different, but um, sculpture is just kind of what I fell into. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of started in college in illustration, and uh, I just became more, most proficient at sculpting than anything else. Yeah. Still can't draw. I would be a terrible so how animator. Do you, how do you create these guys? You, you're just simply sculpting. You don't draw first? I don't do any drawings. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't really think that way. I have to be able to turn something around in my hand, and, you know, it's a little. I just kind of... Yeah, I don't do any preliminary sketches or plans. I just kind of let them kind of happen. Wow, man. Your, your stuff is great. What's your name again? Steven. I'm Kurt. Pleasure Kurt. to meet you. Yeah. And uh, you have, do you have a card around here I can Yeah, I can sure. Take? I have a few things. Here's That's a, great. A, a card, a magnet, a sticker. Wow, man. Thank you so much. It's so <laughs> yeah. kick-ass. Your stuff is great, man. All right. Columbia. Yeah, <laughs> man. Do you, take, uh, do you take Apple Pay by any chance? I think so. I think Zettle. I think it takes Apple Pay. Oh, okay. Let's try it. Let's try it. To interview you for my podcast. Sure. Um, what, so what's your name? My name's Kelly. And you, so this is just fascinating to me, this, this uh, tiki zombie guy. It's just a striking image. And has anything been done with this character, you know, cartoons or movies? Or has anyone, like, said, hey, we got to do something with this? Actually, no. Uh, nobody has done anything with it yet. But we are uh, interested in uh, marketing the character or in working with somebody who would like to do, say, a comic book or a cartoon, something like that. Uh, the figure was uh, the character of the zombie. Uh, was originally created by Vern Langdon in 1972. Um, where oh, I don't want to get out, get out of your way. In 1972, yet. by that time, Vern had left Don Post Studios. Uh, Don Post Studios, uh, by that time, had become the preeminent mask maker because in 1966, Vern Langdon sought out the licensing from Universal Studios mm. and made the likeness of Boris Karloff as, as the... Uh, or I'm sorry, of Glenn Strange as the Frankenstein monster, and Boris Karloff and uh, Bela Lugosi as uh, Dracula, uh, the Lon Chaney Wolfman, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down the line, and created what collectors now call the calendar masks, mm. because he also uh, had a calendar made of the of the promotional pictures that were made of the masks. Oh, so. Uh, long and short of it, Vern left Don Post Studios in 1968, and by 72 he started creating some of his own characters, like the zombie and the Neanderthal. I love um, that Neanderthal is great. So, All these, so he, he developed these guys too. 
All uh, these guys? These, this, this particular character was a figure on... Oops. Was a figure in the background of an album that Vern cr had created, uh, which is... Wait, so he made very music? Very tiny. It's way in there. But he made was, music as well? Oh, yes. Vern, Vern was the, actually the first person to write and produce scary symphonic music that anybody could buy. No way. Because before that, you had stuff like, you know, no. My Old Flame with Spike Jones music and, and stuff that was always a joke horror. But Vern said, no, people want to have stuff that they can play and scare them. So he wrote no way. Phantom of the Organ and uh, he wrote uh, Vampire at the Harpsichord. Those two... Uh, 12-inch LPs came out in 1972 or 71, no, 73, and um, he then, he was, at that time, because he was alive, he was good friends with Milt Larson, uh, who uh, owned the Magic Castle, oh. and uh, Milt and Vern came up with this, which is Dr. Druid's Haunted Seance, which is a record album that a kid could, and his friends could have a fake seance sitting around a table and they put early days of uh, stereo, they put one speaker under the table, the other speaker over here. So you have And they the would seance. play this music for their seances? Well, you have not just music, but the voice guided you through the seance and when the spirit showed up, her voice came from under the table because Incredible. it was stereo. So it was theater on record. I love it. It's brilliant. And he also... Uh, did uh, Hollywood Spooktacular, uh, which is uh, uh, John Carradine reciting Edgar Allan Poe to music. Oh my gosh. So, uh, and uh, actually to his dying day, uh, John Carradine said that was a fa his favorite record album he, ever, he had ever done. Wow. Um, wow. They did uh, uh, Music for Magicians was oh again my a collaboration God. between... Uh, between Vern and uh, uh, Milt Larson uh, was exactly that, big stage music for, me, for magicians. Oh, my God. And uh, the same collaboration, Milt Larson owned uh, a steam calliope, so Vern could play anything with keys, so he played a variety of circus songs on a calliope. So really, to this day, it's the only true calliope CD you can buy. Uh, everything else is, uh, uh, what do you call it, like electronic calliope. It's not a real steam calliope. Oh my gosh. Uh, and he was also friends with Carla Pandit, uh, who was... I remember hearing about that guy. He basically had made an alter ego, didn't he? Corla Pandit created himself. Yes, he did. And Corla Pandit... Oh my God, this is incredible. Wow, this is all linking up together here, man. Corla Pandit was, was making exotic music on television back in the 50s when guys like Martin Denny were playing at, at Duke Kakanamoku's in Hawaii. And Martin Denny was making bringing it mainstream by having it on KTLA. So, yeah, Vern was connected with all of this stuff. And the reason we're here now is primarily because he was making those masks at Don Poe Studios and they were being advertised in Famous Monsters of Film Land. Well, the reason they were being advertised in Famous Monsters of Film Land was that Vern had a connection through Milt Larson with Genie Magazine, which is a conjurer's magazine, a, 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 a magician's Incredible. Uh, craft magazine. Incredible. And he started advertising the masks in Genie, but he stole the typeface of monsters from Famous Monsters of Filmland. Oh. Unwittingly, he liked the typeface and used that in the ad for Genie, or for the Genie Magazine. Well, uh, the... Uh, uh, the producer uh, and uh, editor, or the, I'm sorry, the producer of Famous Monsters of Filmland, Jim Warren, saw that magazine and said, hey, oh. that's my typeface. Oh. So he wrote a letter to Vern and said, inasmuch as I have always wanted to own a mask company, we need to come to an agreement about using my company's typeface. So from that day forward, the fledgling famous Monsters of Filmland magazine had ad space 
for Don Poe Studios masks in it, oh and the two became God. synonymous. I love it. And Vern Langdon also wrote, ghost wrote articles yeah. and appeared at different conventions for Famous Monsters of Filmland, was friends to his dying day with Jim Warren and Forey Ackerman. So that's the Vern Langdon connection. Oh my God. And why we are all here loving monsters today. I love it. This is so cool, man. This is very, very cool. Thank you for that. I think I'm going to have to buy this, this uh, Music for Magicians CD if you could. If, it's 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 um, or is it's it pipe digital? It, it is pipe organ music. Mm. Um, I think it was uh, yeah the Palace of Mystery Theater organ. So it's a it's a full theater organ. Cool. So it's it's very stately. Cool. Um, this is very very cool. I'm so glad that you're carrying <laughs> on the, the name and all this stuff. I mean I could totally imagine each of these guys. In a movie, and you know, just like a, a comedy. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, we're. Uh, I mean, we'd like to develop backstory for the zombie, and you know, all these characters. Wow. Um, yeah, because uh, you know, Vern. We. I got I got to meet Vern because I wanted to re-sculpt. When I was a kid, I was so impacted by the face of his zombie oh, as yeah. it appeared on the back cover of Famous Monsters. Yeah. And I could never own one. And I come to learn by talking to Fern that there were only 15 of them made. Oh my gosh. And uh, oh my I gosh. Said, I'd like them, I said, Fern, I'd like permission to do my own sculpture and try to nail that likeness. And we can, you know, go back and forth over the internet. And he said, sure. And this is back in 2000. Oh so, my gosh. So he and I worked on it together over the oh internet. Oh my sent gosh. Pictures and so on. And uh, I did a re-sculpt. So you sculpted these? Well, this, no, I did not sculpt this. Uh, Adam Doherty sculpted these originals. Uh, who, uh, uh, he, uh, but uh, I did the original reissue of Vern Langdon's Zombie Mask in 2000. Incredible. Then I did, around, around 2001, I did the original Vern Langdon's Zombie Mug, which looked very much like this one. Mm. Uh, but all of these, then we have uh, hired other artists to take up the mantle and do their version. This is Jeff Wehenkel from Boutique. He sculpted this one. And uh, Incredible. Uh, Adam's sculptures became candles. And these figures, I cast and painted these figures. And, finished them. Uh, and Vern and I together worked on these two designs. Oh my as gosh. well as his zombie mask, which... If you can find one, good luck. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I, independently with the family, we said, yeah, we, Vern and I never made this mask, but I told him how much I loved it. So I said, I think we should do this one under the same oh my heading gosh. as the others. Brilliant, brilliant. And it's cool. That light box right there is just perfectly... Well, yeah, I, I thought it had to be, it had to be a glow mask because yeah. of the way the... The way that the yeah figure, right? yeah, the the, and this was painted by Ron Cobb, who wow. if you're familiar with the art direction in Alien and, oh. and other films, yes, Ron yes, Cobb yes. had done that. Wow. So yeah, this was this was wow. way before. Well, this was what was it, 72, 72? Okay, Dr. this Drew was seventy four, but I think the actual album was seventy three. Wow, these are fun, man. These are so fun. It's a lot of neat music. I love the work too. <laughs> wow. So are all these pi pipe organ? Um, most of them are. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, this one, the other side, is harpsichord. Oh, cool. So it's harpsichord and, uh, and organ. Um, this one is one particular song, uh, Carnival of Souls. But it is eight different versions of it. I'm sorry, six different versions of it. Oh, cool. Um, now, are these available online for people to get to? Yes, oh, uh, that's at vernlangdon.com. Oh, that's great. And, and also on Instagram at the World of Vern Langdon. Oh, good, good. World of, how, how do you spell it? Uh, world, W O R L D, of Vern Langdon. V E R N E L A N G D O N. Okay, very good, very good. And if you have a card, I'd love to take that with me so I could um, make sure I make sure I properly credit you guys. 
Cool. So I think I'm going to get this uh, music for magicians, actually. All right. Grab you one from back there, so you don't have to oh, get okay, one cool. some of the other mitts all right. Oh, cool! Thank you. This is great, man. These characters, everything about this. Music for magician. Okay. Yeah, you can take out. Oh, okay. Well, it's oh, okay, not used. Cool. It's not used, but other, I've touched it. Well, that's all right. No worries. <laughs> that's okay. <clears throat> I could just totally picture a, a movie. I mean, look at him. He's he's carrying his his he's cocktail his in his own, hand. His Maybe he serves. You know. Yeah. I mean, he just seems like such a funny. Well, like no, he, I don't. I don't know. It would. Be, I don't know would if you he think he would? Because it would be dangerous for him to get wet. Oh, that's true. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, and that that was always my fear, of, or my my point with. Uh, What's the zip on the car? Nine one six four two. It's always my thing about the mummy. Why would anybody be afraid of the mummy? I mean, just hit him with a broom and he goes Yeah, yeah. Oh. There we go. Oh, it was a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, thank you. Uh, text or email? Uh, you, know, it's, uh, uh, you know, I don't need a receipt. I don't need a receipt. That's right. Thanks, what was your name? Jason. Jason, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Pleasure to meet you. What's your name again? Kelly. Kelly, pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. If you're still hanging on, thank you for listening to this uh, episode of Inspirato Projecto, where we visited the Son of Monster Palooza convention. Today is. The 20th. And tomorrow is the first day of the Dos Lagos Film Festival. The 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of October, 2022, in the town of Corona, at the shops. They call them the shops at Dos Lagos. And this um, theater is called Dos Lagos 15. It's a starlight theater. And so that's going to be happening... 21st, 22nd, 23rd. And uh, on each one of those days, at least one of my movies will be will be shown on the big screen. I've got four of them. I've got uh, one called Phantom Forum, another called Unseen Community, another called Santanitas. That's a Christmas movie. And then my latest one, Today I Came Home. Those will be playing... Um, if you want to see those, those are in blocks of other short films. And if you search for that, there's actually, there's October 23rd at, uh, I believe it's at 4.15 PM. That's where three of my movies will be played. Phantom Forum, Santanitas, and Today I Came Home. So those three will be played in the same block on the 23rd. And then um, I think Unseen Community is, pl- is being played on the 21st. So it's very exciting. It's very exciting when you decide to become the media. Create the art that you want to see in the world. Remember that. Not what other people want to see in the world. You're the one making up the formula. Remember that. You are the one making up your formula. And no one else can take that away from you. I don't care how many critics are telling you that you're doing it the wrong way. Every person has heard that at some point in their life. They don't know what your way is. They don't know what your way is. Maybe you're the kind of filmmaker who, who uh, insists on shooting upside down. I cannot fault you for that. Imagine that. Imagine a, a director who shoots things upside down. And all of a sudden, 
you know, and then they, you know, maybe they flip it. They flip it right side up for the, for the audience. But imagine all the different kinds of perspectives you can get from something like that. Things that you wouldn't see normally, certain geometric patterns, configurations, textures that maybe you would miss if you're looking at it in the way that you're used to looking at it. So just remember, every formula was once um, not a formula. Every formula grew from, they should call it a frumula instead of a formula, right? Frumula. Where did the formula come from? Well, it came from someone in most cases just bumbling about, not really knowing what they're doing. Just putting their intention forward, following their heart, staying true to the art form, getting out of the way to themselves, and letting it speak through them. That is what has happened. How many times do you think David Lynch has heard throughout his life? Oh, you're so weird. What are you doing? Ah, 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 ah. Well, guess what? For every person who's naysaying that, there's a whole bunch of others who absolutely uh, love what he's creating simply because he's creating it his own way. People resonate with it. And what's so interesting is, like, if you look back to Twin Peaks, people were baffled when he made that. And in Twin Peaks, she said, she said um, I'll see you in 25 years. And how cool is that? He basically, it was a prophecy. I don't, I don't know if he knew it was a prophecy back then. Maybe he did. I wouldn't, I'd not be surprised. And 25 years later, what happened? Twin Peaks season three comes out. Finally, the world, a lot of it, kind of caught up with him. Because imagine like, all the kids, all the teenagers, all the adults, everyone who had loved Twin Peaks at the age that they were when it came out. And then you grow up through the years. And as Twin Peaks got released, released on VHS tapes, people were then renting it at the theaters and uh, at the um, video store. And then <clears throat> once it got released on DVD. Oops, we got cut off with a uh, phone call phone call came through um yeah but it's just very interesting that david lynch 25 years ago um laura palmer says we'll see you in 25 years and sure enough they come around with twin peak season three and it was very you know it was warmly welcomed because all those all those people who saw it you know 25 years ago and had been watching it over and over and then they come out with new you know blu-ray versions of this thing where uh they've added some scenes, like for instance, for uh, um, Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me, what they did was they had something called Missing Pieces that they came out with, which is a bunch of scenes that did not make it into the movie. And um, I hadn't seen, I still haven't seen that. So I don't know if they actually added the scenes into the movie, you know, like did an edit like that, or if it was something like, okay, here's the movie on the DVD or Blu ray, what have you, and then here's the bonus material um so having said all that make the art that you want to see in the world and that's basically what happened with this film festival more and more of these things as I'm you know seeing what's what's evolving um in my immediate life experience and I look around at how these these dreams that I've had are manifested uh, it just blows my mind I always had those dreams of wanting to have my own radio station production company um, all this type of stuff and I thought well instead of making movies and sending them off to film festivals and begging for them to accept it or to play it or to find a good time slot um, you know what if we just make our own film festival and we could play our movies there. It's our festival. And we could choose what, what movies we like and put those up there. So that's what happened. And um, this Dos Lagos Film Fest that's happening starting tomorrow for the next three days. Um, 
if you remember, this is the second film festival we created. The first one is called Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival. That started in 2016. And it started at the exact same theater that we are opening up our very first Dos Lagos at. So Kapow um, started out there, same theater. Then we moved it out to uh, North Hollywood at the Lemley. And so um, it was much less of a drive for people to get to. And uh, it's just a few... It's like one um, subway stop away from Universal Studios. It's two subway stops away from Hollywood and Highland, you know, where all the stars are and the uh, handprints at the Chinese theater. So, yeah, we're still going to be having Kapow. In fact, if you search online, um, Inspirato Projecto, Kapow, you can can listen um, to interviews that I had with those folks long ago and I'm going to um, do the same thing this time around I'm going to be kind of like moving moving out and about um, podcasting people it's going to be a lot of fun so (coughs) stay tuned uh, because there are still so many recordings that I have saved up in my drafts folder of uh, our Yachtly Crew East Coast tour and a bunch of other stuff. So, yes. Take care. Thank you for listening to uh, Inspirato Projecto. And if you like, tell your friends about it. It's on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breakers, Spreakers, uh, Overcast, Podcast Republic, Radio Public, Podacy, Podchaser, uh, Pod Addict, TuneIn, iHeart, Mixcloud, Podmust. There, it's it's all over the place. And, uh, and it's thanks to you for listening. So, by the way, if you want to contribute to any future uh, episodes, please give me a call, 561-203-9179. 561-203-9179. Leave a message on there, and I'll put it into uh, an episode of Inspirato Protecto. Thank you so much for listening. Take care, and continue to look for opportunities to be inspired. Thank you to every contributor of this episode, including Rob Broski from Twin Peaks, The Return, and Mickey Dolenz from The Monkees. Thank you so much for listening to Inspirato Projecto. And if you would like to be included on the next episode, please call 561-203-9179 or leave your message and we will include it on a future episode. Thank you so much for listening. Hi, it's Mickey Dolenz here. You're listening to Inspirado Projecto.